All right, so now that you've looked into and explored all the possibilities you have with random numbers, we're actually going to incorporate this into our program. So first thing I need you to do is click on Visual Studio and open it up. And then we're going to start a new project in Monogame. So it's initializing my templates. I'm going to name this unit 4-random because I'm incorporating those random numbers in there. Then I'm going to use the Monogame Windows project as I move forward. So click OK. It'll initialize and get all that skeleton code in there for me. I can click on game1.cs and here I can see my program and then I can scoop up all of those comments to help me out a little bit. So random numbers are a built in set of code that we can use as we are working in Monogame. Now, the first thing we have to do because it's not built into the basic framework that you start off with when Monogame creates the beginning code for you. So you have to go to the very, very top and you need to type in using system. So this will bring in the random class for you. Now, I want to show you what happens when we don't use this. So it should be using system. Sorry about that. So first, I'm going to comment this out just so you can see what happens when we don't have using system in there if you just start off your game normal. So here, let's say, well, we're going to use random numbers. So we want to create a random object. So I'm going to create a random object. I'm going to call it, be careful, sometimes it likes to autocomplete on you. So random and I just hit the arrow key to avoid that autocomplete. I'm going to create a new object called rand. So it's a new random object. Now you'll notice right now it's underlined in red and that's because the random class hasn't been brought into the program yet. So we need this using system to bring in the random class so that we can use its functionality. So here you'll notice if I uncomment using system and I'm using system, that the red marks go away and now I have a random object created. Now, just as I stated in the videos prior, we only need to create one random object per program. We can then access that one random object and create random numbers from there. So here you see I've created my one random object. And what I'm going to do in this program is I'm going to select, or I'm going to change the background color by using random color. So this time, instead of selecting red, green, and blue variables, I'm going to actually create them randomly. So I need to create a byte variable called red, and I'm just going to start off at zero, a byte variable called green, and then a byte variable called blue. And we'll start those all off at zero. Now, what I want to happen is every time update runs, I want update to actually change those colors to be something that is random. So here in update is where I'm going to set those colors to change. So I'm going to take red and say red is equal to rand is the name, name of my object dot next will give me an integer. And then if I put numerical values in here, so one, two, if I think about a byte variable, and remember bytes only go from one to 255 for values. So I want to make sure I honor that here. So for red, I want to create values between one and 255, which means inside of my parameters there, I'm going to have one and 256. Because remember, this will create an integer between one and 255. You subtract one from the second number here. Now, you'll notice that this is underlined in red. And that's because what we're trying to do is we're trying to save an integer value into a variable with type byte. So we need to do something called type casting. For those of you that have taken the AP Java class, I know you've seen this before. Essentially what we need to do is we need to take this integer value and we need to do what's called type casting it into a byte variable so that value can then be saved in red. Because right now, this variable with an integer, the number is just too large and binary to save inside of red. So here what we're gonna do is we're going to put parentheses around rand.next1256. So we're going to put parentheses around that, and then in front of it, we're going to type the word byte. So what this line of code does is it takes the integer that's created by the next method in the random class. It takes this number between 1 and 255 that is created, and it turns it into the type byte. So this is called typecasting, and we're actually turning 
this here, this variable from an integer into a byte value so that it can then be saved in red. And then what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this line of code. We're going to repeat that for green. I don't want capitals up. And then we're going to repeat that for blue as well. So now in my update code, I can see that every 60th of a second, red, green, and blue are going to be a random value. Now down here in draw, I need to finish this off. So right now I know my screen is going to currently be blue. I need to change that. So if I come in here, I'm going to create a new color object. I'm going to call it background is equal to new color object. And I use the red, green, and blue byte variables to create that color. And then I want to clear the color to that screen. So just to recap a little bit, we created a random object called rand, and that will create all of our random numbers in our whole program. And we used, we created that because we brought in using system, which brought the random class into our program so we can access it. Then we created three byte variables called red, green, and blue. And then we randomly generated their color by choosing an intensity for red between one and 255, it green between 1 and 255, and blue between 1 and 255. So we're going to get a random combination of red, green, and blue together. Then for, down here in draw, I created the color rod that's going to take these randomly created values and create a new color. And then here, we're clearing the background to that color. So now if I press start, what you will see is that the background color randomly changes very, very quickly. So Remember that update runs 60 times a second. So right now the color on the background of our screen is changing at a rate of 60 times per second. So what I need you to do is I need you to fix this program. Think of a way that you could get this to slow down. So right here, this is where we randomly chose values of 255 for red, green, and blue. So you're going to need to add some sort of code in here that will slow down the changing of color. So you know this is how we randomly select those values between 0 and 255. And now what I need you to do is slow that down. So actually figure out a way that you can incorporate a concept that you already know so that it'll change maybe every half second or every one second, or every two seconds, or every quarter of a second, whatever you choose to do. So it's ultimately up to you, but you need to slow that down. And then you have to get that checked off by me. So good luck.